And now, What's My Line? Brought to you by Stop It Spray Deodorant. Poof, there goes perspiration. Poof Deodorant Body Powder, the body powder you spray. The Nest Shampoo, the new flowing cream shampoo. All in the first truly functional cosmetic containers. Far easier to use. All created by Dr. Jules Montagnier, the famous cosmetic chemist. Time now to enjoy What's My Line? And now let's meet our What's My Line panel of well-known personalities whose lines you already know. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers Coast to Coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. The delightful humorist, columnist, and publisher, Mr. Bennett Cerf. On my left, the greatest thing to ride out of Boston since Paul Revere, Miss Arlene <laughs> Francis. Oh, thank you, Bennett. And on my left, our favorite comic panelist, Hal Dimples Block. And on my left, my favorite news commentator and one of the nicest people I've ever met. Boy, was he worried for a minute. <laughs> John Daly. Thank you and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to What's My Line, presented by Stop It. Once again tonight, we've got some folks who've come from near and far, all of them with, uh, we hope, unexpected occupations to give our friends on the panel a run for the money. The guests hope to carry home some prizes. We'll also have a guest challenger before the panel a bit later in the program, but right now to start things rolling, it's time for the experts to meet our first challenger whose job they've got to spot. Will you sign in, please, ma'am? Helen Dolan. Right. <laughs> Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. Well, Mrs. Dolan, where do you live? Patterson, New York. Patterson, New York? New York State. Mm -hmm. Oh, for heaven's sakes, I didn't even know there was a Patterson, yeah. New York. You didn't? No. There were an accident there today, wasn't there? Yes, there was. Mm -hmm. Well, they seem to want to talk to you some more. Would you walk down in front of the panel Surely. for me, please? It's been a lovely eight weeks. Thank you. All right, Mrs. Dolan, will you come over here now and sit down next to me? And on the basis of your handwriting, the fact that you come from Patterson, New York, not Patterson, New Jersey, and the quick Look that our friends have had it. We give them one free guess as to what your line may be. We'll begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think Mrs. Dolan is a concert violinist. A concert violinist, Mr. Sir. I think she's the only woman in Patterson who has a product without chlorophyll in it. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Francis. Well, I think Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Dolan belies her looks. I think she's probably a lady moving man. A lady moving <laughs> man, Mr. Block. I think she probably works in a fruit store. I think she's quite a peach. <laughs> that I will agree with, but the answer isn't specific enough. Nobody's right. We'll let our viewers at home have a closer look at Mrs. Dolan, and at the same time, we'll tell them what her line is. <laughs> but, Battle, you've got to dig. Now, Mrs. Dolan, every time you can give them a no answer, it'll cost them $5. We'll ring the score up right here. Ten no's or $50, and you won the game. Mrs. Dolan is self-employed, and with that, we'll begin the general questioning with Mr. Block. Me? <laughs> uh, do you uh, have anything to do with the product? Yes, I do. Quiet. <laughs> is this a useful product? Yeah. Yes. Is it ever used in the home? Yes. <laughs> Would you ever find it outside the home? Yes. Could this product ever be held in a person's hand? Yes. There's something going on here that I don't know about. <laughs> Is this something that might be edible? Yes. Yes. This must be a peculiar type of eating. These kids are laughing. <laughs> Would it ever be found in a place like perhaps 21 or the Copacabana? Yes. Could it be an expensive type of food? Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, I would say it could be an expensive type of food, yeah. Well, is it the type of thing like if I went to a, a, a 
nightclub and I ordered it, my girl would be very happy. <laughs> I gotta give him a note of that. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, if Mr. Block ordered this, uh, would he be likely to order it for somebody other than himself or his girl? <laughs> no. I would Probably say that we have to be fair and say that uh, it would be unlikely that he would order, and to that degree, we have to say the answer is no. So that would be two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Dillon, is this product ever cooked, this food? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's cooked sometimes. It does, it's some only sometimes cooked. Yes, uh, as the so. product, Would you say it was sometimes I cooked and so. sometimes it wasn't? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Does the product grow out of the ground? it any part of the product grow out of the ground? Yeah. Uh, would it be called a part of the vegetable kingdom? Yeah. It could be. Yes, it could be. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that the principal ingredient in the product that you uh, handle, this part that comes out of the ground? Well, actually, I think that Mrs. Dolan would agree with me that it would depend on circumstances as to uh, what you say. Yes, yeah. It could be that the principal part... Is this, uh, is this product a, uh, any kind of a grain? Grain? Yes. Grain? It could be. Yeah. It could be a grain. <laughs> well, would you be able to buy this product in a bakery? Uh, I don't think so, no. Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Well, from what Dorothy and Bennett have asked, uh, could I presume that maybe you wouldn't buy this product at all? Well, <clears throat> is, it some, is this something that you would not go into a store and buy? I think we'd have to say yes to that, yeah. yes. You would not go in and buy it. Would anybody give it to you? <laughs> well, yes, they might give it to you. Does it come in several different types? I noticed that you say there's grain and vegetable. Could there also be a meat product involved? Yes. <laughs> Is it something that you might not like? Uh, yes, I think so. Uh, do, you keep it, do you keep it in a kitchen? Sometimes, yes. Could you ever keep it any other place? Yes. Would you ever keep it in a bar? Yes. Keep it in a bar? Yes, if you had a bar in your house, would you also have some of whatever these are in the bar? <laughs> well, I will leave this to Mrs. Dolan. You've answered yes. I say there are circumstances where you might have some of this. This stuff really gets around. Would it be something you would like to get rid of? <laughs> yes. Uh, would it be something that you might put out of doors? Yes, you can. Uh, would it be something that you shouldn't kick around till it disappears? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, would it be something that you would want to dispose of, like garbage? Yes. Well, what could you do with a thing like that? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you have to find out, Miss She Harvey. is not one of the inmates. <laughs> <laughs> do you um, dispose of garbage some way? Yes. And you're self-employed? Yes. This is your chosen work? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what you might do except collect garbage, but I don't know wh what you'd collect it for. Oh. I think we have to go. Mrs. Dolan does collect garbage. She drives. Actually, she and her husband together have a, a little business in Patterson. Oh, in I thought that can't... was a city uh, thing, you know. I thought no. the city paid you for doing that. Well, if you wait town. for the city... Oh, it's a town. small town. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. and, and you all do your own work. It's a yes, little community we, where we... We're hired by each individual. Small garbage, too? <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, sometimes not. Well, I must say that I do wish that I lived in Patterson. I can't think of anything more pleasant than having you come every other day. <laughs> yes, thank well, you. Well, you did much. fairly well with the prizes. We hope you enjoyed your visit. Thank it was you, nice I to did. have you with us. Will you sign in, please, sir? Howard. Howard Katz. How are you? Tell us, first of all, where you live. New York City. You live in New York City. Well, all these people then, I dare say, are familiar to you. Will you walk down and take a closer look at them? Can I hear your muscle? Do 
wants to wear his coat. Arlene, feel it must. <laughs> I'd be glad to. I just want to do it for friendship's sake. I don't care. I won't find out anything. But All I right, like Mr. Katz, will you come over here now and sit down next to me? And on the basis of your appearance before the panel and your handwriting, and if you come in a bit closer, we'll give them one free guess at this point as to what your line may be. And we'll begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think he's a jazz musician. A jazz musician, Mr. Sir. I think he teaches in a high school somewhere. Miss Francis. I think he puts the stitches in National League baseballs. Mr. Block. I think he works in a pretzel factory. He's a fellow that goes on a bender. <laughs> now, I'm afraid nobody has it. We'll let our viewers at home have a further look at Mr. Katz, and at the same time, we'll tell them what his line is. <laughs> but the panel's going to have to dig. Mr. Katz, you heard me explain the rules. Yes. This is the scoreboard up here. Every no answer that you give him will cost him $5, and we'll keep the record up here. Ten no's are $50, and you've won the game. Mr. Katz is salaried. With that, we'll begin the general questioning with Bennett Surf. Mr. Katz, uh, is there a product involved in what you do? Yes, sir. Is it a product that is used by both men and women? Yes. Uh, does it come in a package? Yes. Could this package be carried? Is it portable? Yes, it is. Uh, would it be uh, bought in a store? Yes. Would you use this product in your home? Yes. Could the product be used uh, in the morning? Yes. Early in the morning? Yes. Would I be likely to eat a bowl of it for breakfast? <laughs> no. One down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Well, is the product edible? Yes, it is. Uh, is it something that you would have at meal time? No. <laughs> Two down to date to go, Mr. Block. This is something edible you can't have at meal time? It would be not be the normal thing to have it at mealtime. You might. Nobody knows that. <laughs> it is something that human beings wouldn't have at mealtime. It is something, yes, it is something human beings wouldn't have at mealtime. Yes. Uh, would it have anything to do with four-legged animals? No. Mm, I don't think so. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, does it have something to do with human beings? Yes. Uh, in other words, this is something that you put in your mouth under, uh, in some occasions, uh, but you do not have at mealtime, is that correct? Yes. Uh, does this improve you in any way? Ah! Well, now, <laughs> I would say if Mr. Katz will agree that there are some who feel that they are improved by the use of the product, would Definitely, it? yes. Mm. Uh, I might say this is a subject of some debate in other I circles. See. Is this anything that you would have um, in between meals or before meals? Yes. Is this by any chance liquid? No. That would be four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Katz, you say you only sometimes put this in your mouth? Did I understand that correctly? Well, Can it be used in any other way? Yes, it can. You rub it in your hair. It can be. <laughs> Take baths in it. You mean this is a kind of food that you don't have to eat? That's true. We just say you don't have to eat it. Well, what else can you, can you do? do, do you That's inhale? a very good question. Do, do you inhale it? Can you inhale it? Yes, yes. you can. You, you can inhale this food? Does the FBI know about this? <laughs> Is this perfectly legal, this food? <laughs> uh, does it have any uh, peculiar effects upon you uh, after you inhale it? Uh, I think, again, if Mr. Katz will allow me to, to uh, answer for both of us, um, the effect is um, gratifying. I wouldn't say necessarily peculiar, but to the extent that... Uh, would, you, would you say this might uh, produce a ticklish sensation if you uh, inhale this, causing you to sneeze? In one degree, uh, is, it can uh, produce that. In is there degree. anything in the Snuff family concerned with your livelihood? Yes. Uh, yes now, uh, we, do, do, you, do you make Snuff? No. No, they make not. Five down and five to go. Do you I sell Snuff? Sell no, Snuff. No, right. You sell Snuff. <laughs> well, we got to shake hands with the kids. He's a wonderful.
What did, I used to drive through the New Hampshire hills and remember the snuff advertisements. What yeah. kind of snuff do you sell? Uh, Garrett snuff. Garrett, Garrett snuff. Garrett snuff? Yeah. Yeah. Same oh, snuff snuff. Snuff snuff. <laughs> <laughs> snuff snuff. And you did very well with the prizes, I think. We also enjoyed having you and hope you had fun on What's My Line. Nice to see you. <laughs> now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity. Our friends on the panel would recognize our guest by sight, so we've provided them with blindfolds. The blindfolds all in place, panel? Mm -hmm. yep. Yes. Good. Will you come in, Mystery Challenger, and sign in, please? <laughs> well, <laughs> this could be Stephen. <laughs> Panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery celebrity, we dispense with all the usual preliminaries and get right down to the general questioning. I must tell you that due to circumstances beyond our guest's control, uh, our guest is not able to answer questions himself. I will have to answer them for you as best I can. Uh, we'll begin the general questioning then with Arlene Francis. Uh, well, I was a rousing reception. Is this a beautiful woman? <laughs> that would be one, one down and nine to go. Mr. Glock. She ain't beautiful? <laughs> well, uh, is, is, uh, the celebrity in pictures? Uh, yes. Is the celebrity a star? Yes. Uh... <laughs> Has she been in a picture recently? Has she been in a picture recently? <laughs> That's um, presumption two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Would I be going too far if I suggested that maybe this isn't a she at all? Uh, that would be correct. Yes, uh, it, yes, she is a male. <laughs> <laughs> she is a male? <laughs> and she sounded rather heavy-footed, too. I beg your pardon? I say, uh, she sounded rather heavy-footed, or he did, coming in. Uh, is, is this person uh, capable of a rather unusual athletic endeavors? <laughs> Three down and seven to go. Mr. Sir. Mr. Mr. Daly, not being able to talk, which is something very unusual for a guest on this program, would I be presumptuous if I ventured a suggestion that this mystery guest was an animal? Uh, you would not be presumptuous. You may pursue any course you choose. Would, uh, well, I'm going to ask, uh, is, is the guest, uh, an animal? Yes, I think so. Is the guest an animal who, uh, ordinarily, uh, is not given the power of speech, but in some motion pictures possibly has talked? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, would this be an animal that, uh, begging Hal Bach's pardon, is a, a sort of a jackass or a mule? <laughs> Got it? You gotta get on to yourself. <laughs> Our guest is a mule, yes. I would say it's Francis. Well, beg my pardon! <laughs> To the First time I've kissed a star in years. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Francis, the talking mule, Universal International Pictures, real star, just made a picture. Francis goes to West Point, and I wouldn't miss it for all the money in the world. Well, I say something, it. Francis. <laughs> say something. <laughs> <laughs> that is what is known as lifting the lip to block. We all do it, and uh, we're glad to see, Francis, that you feel the same way about it. Well, all Francis's very... do. <laughs> Can you take Francis over to say good night? We always have to, to say good night. Uh, to Arlene sister. Francis. <laughs> Hi, you're running for all. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. And thank you, Francis, for coming and being our mystery celebrity. I wasn't quite fair. I heard that noise coming in. 
Well, we were just hoping you'd feel it was me, but no, we didn't. I like the name of that town, Kutztown. And the quick look that our friends from the panel have had at you, we're going to give them one free guess as to what your line may be, and we'll begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think she makes shoe fly pie and apple pan dowdy. <laughs> shoe fly pie and apple pan dowdy, Mr. Sir. I think she paints those hex signs on barns down there. <laughs> Miss Francis. I think she's got the best diner in Kutztown. <laughs> Mr. Block. I think she probably cuts the holes out of, out of uh, lifesavers and probably makes a mint. <laughs> no, I'm afraid nobody's right. We'll let our viewers at home have a further look at Mrs. Kleppinger, and at the same time, we'll tell them what her line is. But panel, we have about four minutes to get this in. We'll give you one more bit of help. You know what the rules are. Uh, every no answer gets you $5. We keep the score up here. Ten no's, $50, you've got the game. We'll give you one more bit of help. Mrs. Kleppinger is self-employed. With that, we'll begin the general questioning with Miss Kilgallen. Uh, is there any uh, product connected with what you do, Mrs. Kleppinger? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. You perform some kind of service, Mrs. Yes, Kleppinger. Yes, I do. Is this service performed uh, uh, every day of the week? Yes. Is it uh, something that you, uh, people come to you for? Sometimes. You sometimes go to them? That's correct. Do you uh, deal with human beings? Do you perform these services for human beings? Yes. Of both sexes? Yes. Uh, are they pleased to have you perform these services? Sometimes. <clears throat> uh, would you say that you uh, left them happier after you would perform the services? Again, sometimes. Only sometimes? Do you come in physical contact with them? Yes. Do you touch them in some way with your hands? Mm, what became of sometimes? You, you do touch them with your hands? Yes, yes. usually. Is this uh, touching for purposes of uh, healing them or making them feel better? Mm -hmm. yes. Sure, yes, I it think is. so. Do they feel better after you've touched them? Sometimes. Sometimes, yes. <laughs> uh, Are they in a horizontal position when you touch them? Not always. Sometimes they are. Sometimes, sometimes they're vertical. Sometimes. Uh, sometimes dressed and sometimes not so dressed when you touch them? Yes. Do you require some special training for what you do? Yes. Does what you do require any physical strength? No. That would be two not down so. and eight to go, Miss Francis. You said special training. Does it require formal training? Do you have to be a graduate? Yes. Then you would be a professional of some kind? I think so. Yes. yes, yes, I'd say so. Uh, do you have, is the place where people, the place that people come to, would you call this your office? Yes. Um, are you uh, connected with medicine in any way? Yes. <laughs> uh, do you have a, a degree, a doctor's degree? Yes. Uh, would you be considered some kind of a doctor? Yes. Now I have to decide what doctor, what type doctor you are. Uh, you said both men and women come to you. Yes, they do. Uh, are you a general practitioner? I think we've got to buy that. Mrs. Steffinger is a doctor of medicine. She's a doctor of medicine. And Hal Block didn't get to ask you a question, which is probably just as well. But also, Whether I might... Whether she's married or not. We didn't do that bit. <laughs> now, Mrs. Kleppinger is one of the finest types of doctors, too. She's a country doctor. Oh, she gives that's the service, greatest. Well, gives the buddy. service out in the country where they it's spend sometimes... spend more different. time on people for less money than that's any right. people in the world. And so imagine being... Was buggy, Dr. Kleppinger? Yeah. Not anymore. Can we <laughs> shake her hand? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I should think doctor. it would be a very good idea. Would you go over... Actually, Mrs. Kleppinger has asked me that her prize go to the polio fund, so we will just say that uh, well, none of you got it, and the whole prize goes to the uh, Kleppinger fund. Oh, oh, thank you. Thanks very much for being our guest. Bye-bye. And now, in just a moment, ladies and gentlemen, good night, doctors. Good to see you. We're going to give you a preview look at one of the guests whose line our panel is going to be asked to identify on next week's program. And now next week at this same time, our panel of experts will be asked, what's my line by this young woman? Would you know what her occupation is? Could you spot her line? For the answers to these and a good many other questions, 
Be back with us again next Sunday evening at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time when once again Stopette invites you to play What's My Line? For other localities, check your local listings for the date and time of our weekly series. Until then, this is John Daly saying good night, Dorothy. Good night, Brains. Good night, you <laughs> Beacon Street siren, Arlene. <laughs> good night, Al. And a happy donkey to you. <laughs> and good night, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for being with us on What's My Line? This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Totman production. In association with the CBS Television Network.